Good morning. Welcome. Has anyone eaten since Thursday? Because if you did, you probably didn't need to, did you? Make sure my light works. I'll fix it later. Well, good morning. Good morning. Did everyone have a good day of thanks? A good... I'm, you know, I get confused when I speak Spanish, and I, I say dia de gracias, and some people uh, that speak Spanish understand what I'm talking about, and other ones, they say, um, they, they'll call it turkey day. They'll literally call it dia de, what is it, cocono, I think. Dia de cocono or something like that. And I'm like, okay, well, cool, anyway. But it's a day of giving thanks. Giving thanks for the things that we take for granted on a, on a regular basis. I, I, got to spend, I got to spend Thanksgiving Day with, um, with some extended family, and uh, my brother-in-law's dad had actually been in the hospital, and they called, they called all the siblings back from out of state. This was four or five months ago, and, and he was just in, in real bad shape. I mean, knocking on the door of death. And yet he was there on Thursday with us, standing, talking, and just very, very grateful that he was able to spend another Thanksgiving with his family. And so there's, there's certain things that you just you don't take them for granted. Do not take them for granted. I got to spend it with my kids having fun and my wife, and it was, it, was, it was a blessing. And I hope that all of you had a blessed day as well of giving thanks to God for those things that he's given us that we, every day we have them until the day we don't. Amen? Amen. Let's stand together and sing. When the roll is called up yonder. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more. And the morning breaks eternal bright and fair. When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore. And the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is gone, 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 I'll be under, I'll be there. On that bright and cloudless morning, when the dead in Christ shall rise and the glory of his resurrection share. I was trying to figure out a joke for that song to offend Texans in some way. But anyway, I didn't want to. I didn't want to. Thinking, thinking I learned, that is where I learned the word yonder as a kid. <laughs> no, I was born in Arizona. Not enough people said yonder. And so when we sing that song, I think I asked my mom or my grandpa, I go, what's yonder? <laughs> and of course, I was very young at this age, so I hadn't been to school yet. And I'm like, roll? Like a dinner roll? Or what? <laughs> What kind of role are we talking about? But anyway, y'all get the point of that, right? When your name is called out, yonder, meaning over there, up there, when the role is called up yonder, I'll be there. My name's written down, I know it, and I can't wait to get there. I mean, I can, but I can't. If that makes sense, you all understand it, right? Right on. To God be the glory. Praise the Lord, let the earth hear His voice. 
singing y'all go ahead and be seated we've got a few announcements but before we get to that check out this commercial we had done that is airing at sawmill theaters record inflation increasing costs of just about everything gas prices food hurricane ian at this hour barreling into florida it comes just 10 days after another shooting massacre at a supermarket in buffalo new york are you looking for answers are you searching for peace I'm Dr. Joe Faulkner. I'm the senior pastor at Ponderosa Bible Church. At Ponderosa Bible Church, we are passionate about developing devoted disciples. This was Jesus Christ's commission to the church, bringing people together through evangelism and being edified by the word. It is our mission to love God, love others, and to magnify the name of Jesus Christ. Each week, our families, friends, and visitors come together in study, prayer, and worship. Our services start at 9 a.m. with traditional services, followed with our contemporary service at 10.30 a.m. Our youth ministry and kids' outdoor programs help your family live Christ-centered lives, not only on Sunday, but throughout the week. These are fun programs with music, games, food, and of course, teaching from the Word of God. We would like to invite you to join us as our congregation attempts to overcome the hardships and whirlwinds of life. Finding peace in your community and in your God can be found here. We look forward to meeting you. How cool is that? Right on. Very well done. And no, we can't go back on it. I wanted to go back and change what I was wearing that day. But anyway, it, it, it worked out very nicely, and they did a great job with it. So that will be airing um, before each movie that's played at Sawmill Theaters from now until, I think, a year or something like that for a full calendar year. So that's a pretty cool thing. So be ready. Be ready for people to come and visit and reach out and love on them a little bit because that's what we're here for is to develop devoted disciples. So we're glad that you're here to do that. Um, in my announcements, I get distracted on many, many things, and I apologize for that, but welcome. Welcome to Ponderosa Bible Church. We're glad you could be here with us this morning. If this is your first Sunday with us, we'd like you to fill out the little visitor's card in the seat back in front of you. Drop that in the offering plate on its way by or those little black box on either side of the doors on your way out just so we can reach out, love on you a little bit, share a little bit about our mission statement and our purpose here at Ponderosa with you. We'd love to do that. Um, welcome to those of you joining us online. We hope that... Uh, well, we hope that you're enjoying it. We hope that you're having a good morning, and I uh, can't wait to see you back here in person when the timing is right. And Mom, if you're out there, good morning, and I hope you're not cold in Pennsylvania. It's probably warmer than here, actually. But anyway, all right. Next up, this is our last Sunday to collect donations for the special Thanksgiving offering to support Sandeep's ministry, One Child. These donations will go directly to an orphanage in the Philippines that takes care of girls who have been victims of sex trafficking. If you'd like to participate in supporting this ministry, please note Thanksgiving offering on the envelope or the check memo line. And in addition to that, we will be doing um, a collection of that, a normal, like a guys coming down the aisles and passing the offering baskets at the end of this service to accept any donations that you'd like to. So you don't have to go hunt them out and put them in there. You can literally just put them in, put them in that at the end of the service. We'll be doing that for Sandeep's ministry. So we encourage you to give to that if the Lord lays that on your heart. All right, next up, PBC Youth will be doing a tip jar fundraiser at Culver's. All tip jar collections from today, Sunday, November 27th, to this upcoming Saturday, December 3rd, will go to sponsor our youth kids for winter camp. We encourage you to go enjoy a delicious meal and help sponsor our kids. Thank you. 
On Wednesday nights, Pastor Joe has been doing a Bible study on a series called Hard Questions. This week, he'll be answering two interesting questions, one of which is, why are people afraid to die? And the next, why can't women preach or become pastors? So if you'd like to find that out, the answers to that, come to church on Wednesday night at 6 p.m. to find out. All right. Guys, it is time again. This Saturday is men's breakfast, 8 a.m. sharp. We get to eat food. All right, so be here. Set your alarms for it. Come to enjoy a time of fellowship, hanging out with, hanging out with a bunch of guys at church, and getting to eat some food, which all good things come around food. Right? Right. All right, can't wait to see you there. And in addition to that, KOZ will be doing a give back day on Saturday, this coming Saturday. The boys would like to show their gratitude to our congregation for their continuous love and support and plan to serve around the church. As always, they plan to finish with a warm campfire and lunch in the back of the church lot and some fun outdoor activities. The boys will be meeting here on Saturday, December 3rd, from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. So if you have a boy from the ages of 8 to 18, they are welcome to attend. And again, that's here at church this Saturday. All right. Next up, the 2022 Ladies Christmas Brunch is upon us. On Saturday, December 10th at 10.30 a.m., the ladies will gather for fellowship and to celebrate our Savior's birth. This year's theme is The King is Born. Ladies, if you're interested in attending, please sign up now at Second Glances. Remember to bring a brunch dish. Again, I've said it many times, bacon is a great brunch dish, okay? So our lunch dish or dinner dish, really, anything's good with bacon. So feel free, all right? There will be a $5 donation to support the Beeline Community Concert Band as they will be playing some Christmas music for the ladies' enjoyment, all right? And lastly, we have a special request. Starting tomorrow at 9 a.m., we need some help and we need some trucks. Um, Sharon's going to be here starting to decorate the church. And so tomorrow's goal is to get all of the church decorations out of the shed and brought over to the sanctuary. Okay. And then on Tuesday and Wednesday at 9 a.m. as well, she will be needing volunteers to come actually decorate the church. So if you'd like to be a part of that, show up tomorrow at 9 a.m. and Tuesday and Wednesday at 9 a.m. as well. Thank you very much. At this time, I'd like to invite our gentlemen to come forward to receive our offerings, and we'll continue praising the Lord in song. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Jesus, we thank you for the wonderful, wonderful blessings that you give us each and every day. Nothing can compare to what you've given us, Lord. As we give back just a portion of what you've given us, Jesus, we pray that you would bless those monies and expand them and help them go to the glorifying of your name, to reach those who have not heard, to love on those who have not felt the love of Jesus. Be with us, Lord, we ask, in our daily walk as well. Help us to reach out in love to those around us, to support those who need it, to have the words of encouragement that God, only you can give us. When someone looks down, help us to go in love and to talk to them and just to love on them. Give us the words to speak, Lord, we ask. Help us to be your hands and your feet in our everyday walk. Bless this time, we ask, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you please stand and sing with us, Nothing But the Blood of Jesus. I'm ahead of myself. I stand amazed. <laughs> nothing, nothing but the blood. That's next. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean. Oh, Oh. 
Jesus can wash away our sin. Amen? Amen. Amen. sins are washed away, that we can get into a perfect heaven with a perfect God. It is not of anything that we can do, nothing that we can do except merely accepting that free gift of salvation from him. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you all for singing with us this morning. Go ahead and be seated.
As you can see, I am taking a week off from our study in Genesis uh, in order just to talk about Thanksgiving for a week, but really want to talk about the giving in Thanksgiving and a uh, wonderful example of it in Exodus chapter 35, but um, it's this time of the year we get these two holidays that just sort of merge us all together, and there's really something a little strange about Thanksgiving and Christmas, if you think about it. Because even though we're supposed to be focusing on God and everything He's done for us, strangely, it seems to get to be all about us, all about what we want, what we do, what we see, and so forth. For instance, uh, Time Magazine came out with this uh, statement, although they're just repeating all over. I saw it in many uh, periodicals. The cost of Thanksgiving this year is 20% higher than it was one year ago. No, no. No, that's the meal. See, Thanksgiving is Thanksgiving. And, and, you know, giving thanks costs you nothing. It's amazing that uh, this simple response of our heart gets so involved with, with other things. Same thing about Christmas. Oh, I forgot about this guy who's not very thankful. In fact, he says, I don't know why people think I should be thankful. My Mercedes is in the shop for the second time, and there's a roof leak in our cabin in Aspen. What I have to be thankful about. Believe it or not, I heard something like that years ago, and I didn't know if the guy was joking with me or not, so I just, hmm, interesting. <laughs> yeah. There's also something strange about Christmas, which I was going to say, you know, all these gifts and everything, we give the gifts to everyone but Jesus. We don't think about giving to him. In fact, to be perfectly honest, generally giving about Christmas time is down because we could give to all these people. You know, it's kind of like uh, somebody said it this way. <clears throat> uh, we spend money we don't have to buy gifts that people don't need to impress people we don't like. Mm -hmm. um, we get so confused about all of these holidays that ought to be about something we do spiritually in giving and understanding. Now, usually... These, these actions, these attitudes I'm talking about, if we turned back to the Jewish people, the children of Israel, generally, they would be a bad example. But not this morning. I want to take you to a passage where they really shine in this area of not only being thankful, but in giving. So let me show you. Let's go back to Exodus chapter 35, and you can follow along as I read. Moses spoke to all the congregation of the sons of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord has commanded, saying, Take from among you a contribution to the Lord. Whoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it as the Lord's contribution, gold, silver, and bronze, and blue, purple and scarlet material, fine linen, goat's hair. Oh, you got a pile of that at home. And ram skins dyed red. <laughs> porpoise skins. <laughs> Poor little porpoises. Yeah, can you skin a por? I, I guess you can. And acacia wood and oil for lighting, and spices for the anointing oil, and for the fragrant incense, and onyx stones, and setting stones for the ephod, and for the breast piece. That's what the uh, high priest would wear. Skip down to verse 20. Then all the congregation of the sons of Israel departed from Moses' presence. Everyone whose heart stirred him, and everyone whose spirit moved him, came and brought the Lord's contribution for the work of the tent of meeting and for all its service and for the holy garments. Then all whose hearts moved them, both men and women, came and, and brought brooches and earrings and signet rings and bracelets, all articles of gold. So did every man who presented an offering of gold to the Lord. 
Every man who had in his possession blue and purple and scarlet material and fine linen and goat's hair and ram skins dyed red and porpoise skins brought them. Everyone who could make a contribution of silver and bronze brought the Lord's contribution. And every man who had in his possession acacia wood for any work of the service brought it. All the skilled women spun with their hands and and brought what they had spun in blue and purple and scarlet material and in fine linen. All the women whose hearts stirred with the skill spun the goat's hair. The rulers brought the onyx stones and the stones for setting for the ephod and for the breastpiece and the spice and the oil for the light and for the anointing oil and for the fragrant incense. The Israelites, all the men and women whose heart moved them to bring material for all the work which the Lord had commanded through Moses to be done, brought a free will offering to the Lord. You know, this must have been a special time for Israel because they had moved out of Egypt. They're moving toward the, the promised land and toward their final destination around Jerusalem and in that area of Israel. But the meeting with God, the, the, the worship, there, there, was no, there was no place. And, and so now God is going to give them a tabernacle where they can meet with him, where they can see the very uh, essence of his presence. And this was a time in their history when the Jews were actually linked with thanks and giving. Not too often after this, this was a pretty special time. I mean, you look at that. That's, that's not like a, you know, $4 million new church buildings and so forth. I doubt there were any chandeliers in there. I don't see it anywhere in Leviticus and Numbers and Exodus where they were going to put that in there. But just these simple things for them to realize that God was in their midst. Now, the need was what started this giving. They needed materials to build the tabernacle. Now, I want to make this very clear. God did not need the tabernacle. That's not why he's having it built. God didn't need the tabernacle. They did. You see, they needed this beautiful object lesson and almost everything in the tabernacle and later in the temple uh, was a beautiful reminder, a, a physical representation of a spiritual truth. That they needed to understand. God just simply, he, he delights in giving us these physical things that we can see to help us understand and remember the spiritual things that maybe we cannot see. So I want to divide this story into three parts. I think you can remember it by the time we've gotten all through it. I know this is not Charlton Heston, but he looked like a good Moses to me, so I used him. We start out with the request of God. Take from among you an offering. Now, I know some of you really well, and you're going to hit me at the door with this. Uh, Pastor, that is not a request. That is a command. Uh Uh-huh. Chapter 35, verse 4 says, this is the thing which the Lord has commanded That's true, but I want you to get the essence of what he's saying. He commanded Moses to bring this to the children of Israel. But notice the attitude behind it was not just a command. It was totally dependent upon their hearts and their attitudes. Notice in these chapters, verse 5, whoever is of a willing heart... Verse 21, and everyone whose heart stirred him, NIV has willing heart. Verse 22, and all whose hearts moved them, NIV has everyone who was willing. Uh, Verse 26 says, and all the women whose hearts stirred. And, And verse 29, the Israelites, all the men and women whose heart moved them, brought a free will offering to the Lord. And then chapter 36, verse 2, Everyone whose heart stirred him. So yes, God commanded Moses to ask the children for these things. Command if you want to. But it wasn't, it wasn't like a normal command. It was a if your heart is stirred within you. If 
you, you can see your thankfulness to what God has done in your life, then bring these things. And so I want to remind you in the Old Testament, there were two kinds of offerings. You have to understand this in order to understand New Testament offerings. Two types of offering. One was a required offering. The second was a desired offering. You desired to give it. It wasn't required. You just desired it. Now, on the required offering, there was required offerings for the sacrifices, the sheep and the goats and the things they did in all parts of the uh, service for sacrifice. But also, there was offering for service. That is to bring the oil so that the lamps could be lit and so all of these things could be done. But they were required. That's what we call the tithe. Most people think of a tithe as giving. In fact, you'll say, well, we're going to give our tithes and offerings. But a tithe was not just giving. It was a certain percentage of giving. Oh, no, he's going to get into the tithe giving that we ought to be doing. No. No, in fact, some of you may disagree with me. I do not believe that God requires tithes of the church, but... We'll get to that in a moment. The desired offering. It was free will. Your heart moved within you. You wanted to do it. You wanted to give it. You're, you're thankful for this God who has led you and has spoken to Moses and given all of these things. It was a free will offering. We'll just call it the thanks. It was their thankfulness. Didn't have to, but you could. And if you did, it was just purely from your heart. Now, there is only one kind of offering mentioned in the New Testament for the church. Uh, I've, uh, I've taught this for years and years and years because I think it's biblical, but uh, it never fails that someone will say, you are just wrong. We are required to bring the tithe into the Lord's house. Well, let's talk about that. Two types of offering, but only one of these types of offering is found in the New Testament, and that is the free will offering. There is no tithe required in the New Testament church. Uh, I, I know people misunderstand that, but let me explain a little bit to you. Somebody might say, Pastor, you're forgetting that God said we were robbing him if we did not give our tithes. And I don't know how many times as I was growing up, in a Baptist church, we heard that Malachi robbing God sermon. You know it. Malachi 3, verses 8 through 10. Will a man rob God? Yet you're robbing me. But you say, how have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse. For you are robbing me, the whole nation of you. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse so there may be food in my house. And test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you a blessing until it overflows. See, Pastor, we are required to bring the tithe. And that's because generally, folks, we don't understand how to divide Scripture and how God has divided it. Let me see if I can explain to you a few things about this. Some important things you need to know about giving as for today compared to back in Old Testament times. Malachi was written to the Jews. It's not for the church. It was their income tax. It was the way the nation and its religion held together. In fact, talking about a tithe, there were actually three tithes. It's hard to say this name because my mouth is still kind of... Three tithes. Uh, there was 10% here, 10% there. And then there was one tithe that was 10%, but it covered a three-year period. And so altogether, if you were going to uh, honor the Lord with your tithe, it would be 23.33%. But remember, that's what kept the temple going or the tabernacle in the wilderness. It's what kept the priests going and doing the things they did and providing for them. It was basically their income tax. Now, we've got to be careful, folks, in our use of passages. Just because there is a passage in Scripture that says something, you have to ask, is that 
to us? Is it for us? There are a lot of things written that people claim. Even the promises. Oh, God has promised this. And I'm sorry, it's not to you or it's not for you. It was to this group of people for this set time and so forth. When you get to the New Testament, the whole thing of offering is a totally individual thing that God has set up for individuals, not income tax for the church. Let's talk about some of these things. Number two, the tithe was never commanded or mentioned for the church. Uh, you, can, you can see tithe mentioned in the Gospels when we're still under the Old Testament system. In Acts, when there's a, a changeover from the Old Testament to the New Testament system, you may see the tithe mentioned. But in the church situation, God never required the tithe. Instead, the church was instructed to give free will offerings to needs, to things that were going on. And Paul never mentioned a percentage. He never did. He simply instructed us to give freely and sacrificially as God has blessed us. So when we go back and we look at these two types of offering, notice how the offering is described in Exodus 35, 5. Take from among you a contribution to the Lord. Whoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it as the Lord's contribution. This was a free will offering. This instant was not the tithe at all. It was a free free will offering not required, and the people did it if they wanted to. Now, the New Testament says this, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 12. For if the readiness is present, it is acceptable according to what a person has, not according to what he does not have. I've had so many sweet little widow ladies say, Pastor, I just, I don't have a lot to give. But you're not required to give a lot. You're required to give that which you've been blessed with or God has allowed you to. He doesn't come to your door and say, Ah, you haven't been given your tithe lately. It's not required. Second um, Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. Each one must do just as he is purposed in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion. Now, how many times have you been in churches that they're really pushing you to give? Well, what do you think you're doing this morning? No, no, I'm just explaining to you. We've got a special offering for these children in the Philippines. And if you've already given, that's wonderful. If not, if your heart stirs you, but God loves a cheerful giver. I have to tell you, early in my life, when it was hard to make it uh, as a pastor, churches, For a long time, churches didn't even give you enough to live on. And I'll be honest about that. This is the only place I've ever been where I got enough to live on, which is your wonderful people. But it doesn't matter. As a pastor, I'm required to give too. But a cheerful giver. When you learn that principle, when you have that joy, I can't really teach it to you. Because it comes out of your heart. It comes out of what you want to do. Now, I'll be honest with you. For you folks, I have a hard time even mentioning things like this because every time we have a need in the youth or in the children's ministry, people give and give and give. Can't complain. I just want you to understand that the type of giving that God wants you to give is always that way. From your heart. From your desire. See, in Exodus 35, God asked for a free will offering, and the people responded generously. Again, this was not their tithe. This was their free will offering. And notice their response. The response of the people. Exodus chapter 35, beginning in verse 21. Everyone whose heart stirred him, and everyone whose spirit moved him, came and brought the Lord's. And remember, they saw it as the Lord's contribution. It is his money. Uh, Paul makes that clear in 2 Corinthians. It's all the Lord's. He gives us some to deal with life and living. 
He gives us some to help bless others, but it's all his. The Lord's contribution for the work of the tent of meeting and for all its service and for the holy garments. Now watch this. Then all whose hearts moved them, both men and women, came and brought brooches and earrings and signet rings and bracelets. By the way, if you, if you bring that, uh, I'm going to have to give it all to James, our jeweler, and see if we can get anything out of it. Because I don't, uh, We actually had a giving time one time when I was in Arlington, Texas, and a woman gave her wedding ring. Wow. Articles of gold. So did every man who presented an offering of gold to the Lord. By the way, her husband had died many years before. <laughs> I thought I'd better fill in that story. <clears throat> and the results of all of this. And they said to Moses, the people are bringing much more than enough for the construction work which the Lord had commanded us to perform. So Moses issued a command. That was not supposed to move across there. Moses issued the command, stop bringing money. Stop bringing porpoise skin. Stop, just stop bringing. We've got more than enough. And that came all out of free will, heart's desire to please the Lord and to set up a tabernacle to praise him. So the children of Israel were a great example of godly giving. I want to show you another passage, and it too deals with giving. It too is oftentimes a little bit misunderstood. Mark chapter 12, verses 41 to 44. Yes, you know the story of the widow. He, that is Jesus, sat down opposite the treasury and began observing how the people were putting money into the treasury. And many rich people were putting in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins. We call it the widow's mite. Uh-uh. She gave two of them. It's the widow's mites. Plural. It was all she had. Calling his disciples to him, he said to them, Truly I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all the contributors to the treasury. For they all put in out of their surplus. But she, out of her poverty, put in all she owned. All she had to live on. Some things I want you to notice here. The widow is not an example of how you should give. God doesn't want you giving your last cent to the church, to ministries. He wants you to give when you've been blessed. But this is not an example. In fact, because of the way they were ruining the temple and the giving in the Luke passage, God says, this place is going to come down. There will not be one stone left upon another. Now, the, the giving that she did is not an example for us. The attitude... Now, that's a different thing. See, she is an example of how corrupt that religious institution had, had become. Telling people, you got to give. Doesn't matter whether you give, give. And, they, and all the rich people were doing their thing. And here comes the little widow with her two copper coins that she put in there. She's an example of what I call biblical math. In this issue of giving. Let, let me see if I can. Show. I'm not good at math. You all know that. But uh, I'll try here. Okay. Here is a wealthy man. And uh, let's say his worth is 100 million bucks. Yeah. And uh, he comes into the temple and he gives 10 million. I can assure you the treasurer of the temple would be very pleased with that. But when you think about it, he's got uh, 90 million left to live on. I could live on that. I suspect you could too. So, yeah, he gave a lot, but not really. Not according to biblical math. Let's show you a little widow. Poor woman on the streets. Let's say she owns a dollar. That's, that's all she's got. And... Uh, 
Her giving? She gives a dollar. She has nothing left to live on. In that dollar, Jesus said, biblical math, she gave more than all those rich people because she gave of everything she had. I don't think, folks, that the lady went home and died because she was out of money then. But God is not using this as an example of her giving everything, but her attitude, woo, who gave the most here? Well, from an earthly perspective, the rich man did. Every church treasurer would be pleased to get in a check for one, what, what did I say he gave? Ten, ten million dollars, yeah. But from an eternal perspective, it's the woman. Uh, again, men, men don't look at it that way, but that is the way. God doesn't need the money. We need to give out of hearts that are full of thanksgiving, but God doesn't need the money. We need to learn to give. And so this widow's might, uh-uh, two mites, two copper coins she had. But again, she's not an example of biblical giving. She is an example of the attitude of biblical giving. Maybe. <laughs> Think about that attitude. This is all I have. But I love God. And they're pushing me. They're, they're pushing me that I, I need to give. And, and, and I see these rabbis standing around me and I'll put in my two mites. I love God. You think they noticed her two mites? Not at all. But she was willing to give everything, even though God didn't require it. It's her attitude that made the difference. A person's attitude about giving is more important than their actions. Again, I'm just telling you, this is not the way men look at it. It's the way God looks at it. But attitude can be faked. We can fake our attitude. I'm giving everything to God, I, and people don't always see. The issue is not how we give for people to watch. The issue is how we give knowing that only God can really see. Only God can see attitudes. Only God can see uh, what is in our hearts. Men can't. We can fake them out all the time. You know, I, people try that here. We have gotten in, uh, you know, the little, uh, those little envelopes back there where you can give your money and put it in there. We've gotten lots of them with nothing. But somebody put something in the offering plate so people could see. <laughs> Don't go there. D don't. Um, your, your heart isn't toward me or, or to th this institution. This me it's to God. You don't have to impress anybody. Uh, there are a lot of folks who don't even give here. They give online. Get used to it. That's a modern way of doing things. But the issue is attitude. Now, the Thanksgiving offering for the uh, Philippine orphanage. Uh, I'm sorry I picked out this uh, picture, but the orphanage in the Philippines that uh, uh, we're giving to is all girls, except for one boy who is the son of one of the people who, who works in the ministry there. They're all girls who were in uh, sexual slavery, and they've been able to pull them out of that and able to bring them into this orphanage where they're loved, where they have uh, their needs met. But money in the Philippines is hard to come by. Money in a lot of places is hard to come by. And that's why when uh, Sandeep told me about this orphanage, I thought, man, this is a time of year when... People are given to missionaries. They're given to the staff. They're given to, to the boxes to send out. Give... But the issue is not what we can see. The issue is God. And so I thought, you know, it's, it's a good thing to bring to our church people and say, if the Lord moves you to give, 
That's a wonderful thing. If he doesn't, that's a wonderful thing. But giving ought to be that attitude even more than our action. So we're going to close in prayer, and I'm going to ask the men to come forward in a moment. We're going to take almost like we do the benevolence offering, which I guess we'll do next week. And anybody who's been visiting here for two weeks are going to go, that church says they don't talk about giving. That's all they talk about is giving. Man. (laughs) No. Thank you, Father, for the way you've given so much to us. And Lord, I hate to even say that in in the sense of trying to uh, lift up people's hearts to give more because of their thinking about how much you've given them. But it is a, a normal thing, Lord, for us to realize you've done so much for us. You've done so much for the church here. You've done so much to uh, bless our lives. And even this, uh, this week, Father, when many of us were with family and friends and, and realized how much you've blessed us, we are very thankful people. Lord, I pray as we take this special offering that it's not the type of thing that people look around because a lot of folks have already given their gift to this orphanage. And Father, it's not to be looked around because some people have given online. It is a time, Father, for us to be aware of the fact that there is this tremendous need of these little girls. It breaks my heart to think of how horrible a lifestyle is. Little girls and even little boys, but not in this case, are pulled out of life and made slaves to the perverted desires of people. Father, we want to help in the best way we can. Thank you for the ways you've blessed us. And I pray now, Lord, we would be blessed in the way that we have given or give this time or in whatever ways that we know before you, we're doing our best to please you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you all please stand and sing with us? Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. And he shall lift you up higher and higher and he shall lift you up humble thyself in the sight of the Lord humble thyself in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift in the sight of the Lord. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. And he shall lift you up higher and higher and he shall lift you up higher and higher and he shall so much for being here.